Welcome to this week's edition of WTHS. I'm MC Hammer. And I'm Biggie B. Today is March 3rd, and here are this week's hip hop and top stories. Mike Clark, do you know what I love so much about this school? It's its cultural diversity. You were so right. As a matter of fact, Tupelo High School puts on a Black History program honoring Black History Month. Let's see what some of the people involved have to say about this inspirational program. Oftentimes when people hear Black History Month, they interpretate the fact that they think that we're celebrating the black people today, but in originally we're celebrating the people such as Malcolm X and Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King, people from years ago that worked hard, put their lives on the line just so we could have freedom today. To me, Black History Month means just celebrating what African Americans went through so that we could have freedom and being together with our peers. Black History Month to me is like a time for us to celebrate, you know, our past, our history. It's a time where you can just kind of, you know, be who you are, let the world know. It's all about culture and religion. It's all about how we were brought up and from the bottom to how we are now. We began preparing, I would say, last November, generally three to four months, because we want to make sure that everything's good and we want to make sure that everybody appreciates our hard work. It's not something that you can just come and do. It has to take time. We start um, preparing for Black History Month two or three months after school starts, and we go all the way into February. My pastor's name is Pastor Jeffrey Daniel, and him coming here, I think it was kind of special for like the whole school to hear like a glimpse of what I get all the time at church. And he basically has just showed me how faith can get you a long way and how if you keep your faith in God, then everything will work out the way that God plans for it to happen. I felt like my pastor, he really inspired a lot of young people uh, when he came to the Black History Program. I'm um, really just thankful to have a pastor like him to come out and show the young people the right way. I felt really great about my pastor coming. It just felt good having my own pastor speak in front of my peers at school. And I'm used to hearing his voice at church, and so it's really good. I think THS did pretty good with the program because, you know, it's, at the same time, they gave us a, a good message for the young people and something to grow on. Born to win because sometimes people feel like, you know, that their lives aren't important and you never know somebody's going through a loss in their family or they want to take their own life. So when I hear the words born to win, it like kind of uplifts my spirit and puts me in a good mood because, you know, God tells you to hold on and he's going to work out everything. So you just have to smile. Ms. Creston McIntosh and Mr. Gino, they do an amazing job yearly. And considering the fact that this is my last year being able to perform, I'm very appreciative and I just give all all of my thanks to them. They deserve all the credit. Mr. Gino, they did a awesome job. Great organization. It's just, it's very uplifting. It's fun. I think THS did a wonderful job putting the program together because we were able to learn things and just be together celebrating Black History Month. With spring break coming up, I'm really hoping for some warmer weather. Man, Melly Clark, that is so true. I'm sick and tired of this back and forth. I know you have some pretty bad and bougie outfits for the springtime. Let's see what the weather's going to be like in T-Town with Tanner and Carter. Thanks, Molly Clark and Brandon. I'm Tanner. And I'm Carter. Wait, this doesn't seem right. Much better. I'm Tina Scoble. And I'm Hallie Halbert, and this is your seven-day forecast. Today we'll have a high of 62 and lows in the 30s, the perfect day to get my nails done. Saturday and Sunday will be partly cloudy with highs in the 60s and lows in the 50s. On Monday, it looks like I have to move my hair appointment because it'll be raining. And then Tuesday through Thursday, we'll have a highs in the lower 60s. I look better than most of the girls in the Women's Beauty Review, don't you think? Honestly, I think Candy with a K did it better. Anyways, back to you all in the studio. Brandon, would you ever dress up as a woman? No, Molly Clark, you'll never catch me in a wig. Well, some students did to help raise money for a senior trip. We'll see what these beauties have to say. We did the Women's Beauty Review to raise money for our senior trip. We um, got people to pay $3 to come in, and once the ladies went across the stage we had the the people in the crowd pay to vote and so one dollar equaled one vote and that's kind of how we made the money from it. First Baptist let us use their youth room and this was helpful because most of the money that we raised we got to keep because we didn't have to pay. To get it together we just asked a bunch of guys around school if they would want to be part of it which it was kind of hard getting them to participate at first but in the end, they did, and they actually had fun. Some of the money that we raised, we put towards the guys so that they could actually get to do it. And so we 
got them pizza, and there's a $50 gift card that we gave the winner. My name was Jaquisha Hopkins, and my fact was that I'm an AP Spanish, but I can barely speak English. My girl name was Anna, Anaconda, and my fact was that I like gossiping and watching Pretty Little Liars until the sun comes up. My stage name was Diamond, and my hobbies were long, luxurious bubble baths and hot yoga. I wasn't a big fan of the makeup and the dress was a little bit too tight, so I didn't really have a favorite part about dressing up. My girl name was Zoe Lovern. My interesting fact is that I run cross country and that I'm not very good at it. My favorite part of dressing up was having my makeup done, for sure. It would probably be to get new friends because nobody like paid for me, so I would, would, I would have like had new friends to pay for me so I could have gotten the top five. If I could go back and change one thing, I would probably not wear a wig because two people who made it to top five did not have a wig on. If I could go back and change one thing, I would have gotten a wig that wasn't gray. If I had to give any advice to a future contestant, I would say do not wear heels. Work on your poses and um, some signature moves. Uh, my signature move was just a slight like finger point like, hey you, I'm coming for you, like just to really intimidate the people. Uh, my signature move was the toddlers and tiaras uh, chin rest. Bend and snap. Uh, that I think that's what won it for me. My signature move was probably the spin. My signature move on stage was blowing kisses. Uh, it felt pretty good to win because I got a, a gift card and stuff. So, and I got flowers. I got a bouquet of flowers. So that was pretty good. So it felt pretty good. Man, Molly Clark, you really suck. I better think we better leave this to the pros. Or the bros. Hey, let's hop on over to this episode of Bottle Bros. <laughs> This is what we like to call the library shot. <laughs> this is what we like to call strike one. <laughs> hey, no sleeping in class. <laughs> Gee Willie, I think it's about time to end this show. Let's send it back to Molly Clark and Brandon. Alright, Charlie. <gasps> <laughs> we got I got it. Thanks for tuning in to this week's edition of WTHS. I'm Brendan Shaw. And I'm Molly Clark Hudson. And, and you, you can't, can't touch, touch this. this.